All right, good morning, a real early start. I'm um, gonna look for tarpon, uh, which means I probably won't you know, catch anything and <laughs> this video will never see the light of day, but uh, getting down here um, past mid-April and um, yeah, I'm starting to see a few around. So uh, I actually have brought three pass crabs with me, which is something I've never used before. I literally had to look up what to do with those. Um, uh, so we'll see. Um, just a little ways to get to the spot, and I uh, haven't seen anything come up yet, but I'll figure out something. Yeah, you already know from the thumbnail that something insane is going to happen on this video, and uh, yeah, but th this is how it got started. So I've got the uh, trolling motor out, and um, I'm just paddling in, and oh my goodness, I've got tarpon rolling on the surface like I've not experienced before because. I um, am only in Southwest Florida until like the first days of May, and uh, you know that's really the infancy of the tarpon run. Um, but yes, yeah, sometimes you get warm water. You know, it's like 80 degree water this particular morning, and and they're starting to come in, and and they're here. Um, seeing them, getting them to eat, are two entirely different things. All right, I almost never ever use bait, but um, boy, these fish can be very difficult to get to hit. So I've got a live pass crab on there, and uh, I'm going to keep casting uh, while that pass crab is out. And um, yeah, as it's going to turn out, it's not going to make any difference. Neither of these are going to um, get a hit. And you know, I've got two other craft out there. There's a kayak. There's a flat skiff in closer. Um, None of us that I see are, are going to do anything with this, and I'm going to spend a couple hours on it. And uh, then I'm going to make some moves. And uh, this is four hours later. I've made a couple of moves. I've come back to the original spot. You can see the weather has changed. This is first cast back in that original spot. And I'm seeing very few fish now as compared to earlier in the morning. Anchored, but I've got a release clip and a buoy, so I'm just going to disconnect. Mm, look at the size of that tail. Well, that's good at a couple of levels. Uh, it will take a little energy out of them, number one. Number two, it looks cool. And uh, the other thing is, it gives me some confidence in how well he's hooked. Oh, look at that tail. Oh my God. Okay, that's a tired looking fish though. All right, this rod and reel combo, uh, the previous season I landed four nice tarpon on this, all in under 19 minutes, so I, I, I can't handle it. Hey, uh, this fish has dragged me around all the way back though to the original spot. There's my buoy and I have to worry about that. 
Oh, that's pretty amazing. Huh. Holy I'm just hoping he he didn't go under it. All right, no indication on the buoy. Okay. Oh, I thought he was getting close. That thing you see stuck on the rod there is actually the jerk shad that rode all the way up the line. Oh, that spool's hot. Yeah, that line was like wrapped underneath them coming out the other end. Didn't look like a good idea to try to grab the leader at that point. Another air gulp. Right, unfortunately the camera battery ran out. I did get a leader touch a little bit after this. I did not land the fish. It chafed through the leader material, so I did lose it. Um, this is a couple of hours later, back up on the spot. Um, I've beefed up the gear just a little bit, throwing the same lure. And there's a free jerk shad offer uh, in the video description. I'm gonna show the lures at the end of the video. Holy crap! I'm a little better equipped this time. Uh, 30 braid, 3,000 size reel, 
and uh, 50 liter. Okay, so what I'm kind of encouraged about is the jumps because that kind of when they don't jump it's when those battles go on a long time this guy can't even be close to being ready oh man oh, better watch out he's gonna go Come on, kayak, turn. Come on, turn. I said 3,000 mil. It's actually a 4,000, and the rod is rated 12 to 25 pound test line, so it's a really good outfit for this. go again. Come on. I'm not going under the boat this time. Okay. Stay up. Stay up. Yeah, come on. Keep that tail up there. It's very inefficient. Very inefficient. Come on. That is just really cool. Let's get him over this shallow stuff. He's not going to want to go there. Yeah, see. He knows to stay over the sand. Holy shit. I mean, look, I'm not in like Boca Grande here. I'm in, you know, six feet of water. Okay, viewers, what kind of shark can do that? Um, I'm guessing it's a bull. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Um, it, it Really, it's like three to six feet of water here. I'm nowhere near any of the passes. Uh, just a, a total shock to me. All right, both hookups were on five-inch jerk shads. I uh, actually hit the tan one. Uh, the greens, tans, they seem to work well in this area. There's actually, in the video description, a free offer for a package of those green ones. What's really important, those gamakatsu uh, swim bait hooks they seem to work and hold very well in the tarpon. And there's links to all of the gear in the video description. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. And check out my online courses at saltstrong.com slash Skinner. Why these, these fish are just absolutely amazing.